Uh, Lauren Southern, we've said that Lauren Southern is uh, sort of a, we got to come up with an adequate classification for her. She isn't exactly an arch nemesis because we don't actually begrudge her, but we find her very frustrating. I shouldn't speak on behalf of other people, but I find it, I find her very frustrating in the sense that there is a degree of self-awareness that she doesn't possess specifically as it relates to topics of sexuality and the wall and what it is that men are supposed to find attractive, a lot of that stuff. She decided to say some things which have caused some drama that I am now interjecting myself into. Jeremy from The Quartering says, so Lauren Southern and Ashley Blaze mentioned a right-wing casting couch on KC Meyer. They are 100% right. Loads of D-Gen creeps in this space who pretend to be the opposite is why I don't do conventions. I'm happy to name names if the ladies want me to. So Jeremy, it's like, Jeremy, did you not understand the can of worms that you were opening up when you said this? So there's the layer of him signal boosting what it is that Lauren Southern said, but then there's him also adding with it these, these other stories that he says that he's privy to. I don't know what that necessarily has to do with him not going to conventions, unless he is either alleging that he has been sexually propositioned or he just doesn't want to deal with the headache of people making those sort of accusations. Maybe he's just saying he doesn't want to be a part of that scene, but it could be interpreted in a kind of way where it's like he doesn't go to the conventions because he doesn't want to have to sell his body to um, Susan Wiki Wiki. Hey, if we want to start rumors, let's... Let's talk about that now. He says, I'm friends with a lot of popular female personalities on the right, humble brag, and I hear about it all the time. I know women be crazy and all, but the shit I've seen, the stories I've heard are just far too frequent to be nothing. I'm expecting a few angry DMs. He says, they are not my stories, but let's just say I've heard dozens of them. I can't just throw names out there without their permission, especially since it would be hearsay. But just know, in most cases, the more clean they pretend to be, the more degenerate they really are. So let's first deal with Jeremy's side of this. He has seen and heard things, but it's hearsay. No, the things that you hear are hearsay. The things that people have told you, that's hearsay. If you've seen things, you can say that, but what exactly is he doing here? He say, he's saying like to the ladies, hey, if you want me to drop names, if you want me to be the one to disclose your, um, your personal sexual exploits, I'll be the one to do it if you want. <laughs> My first reaction to this was like, how have we not run into some sort of situation here where turns out right wing media is like Hollywood? where there's this casting couch and everyone knows, but everyone's keeping their mouths shut about the fact that they had to sleep their way into a career. Is that what Jeremy's saying here? How did he not expect this to be interpreted that way? Now people are going to look at his female friendships and be like, oh, I wonder, I bet, you know, he's talked favorably a lot of times about like Sydney from um, You Are Here, Sydney and Elijah, right? Is he talking about her? Right? So while some people do these mental lists of Jeremy's associates, and I'm sure there's all sorts of conversations that are happening behind the scenes that we're not privy to, right? But people are going to reference the people that he has brought up. And they're going to be like, oh, I assume that he's talking about them. All we have is Jeremy's secondhand story that they have told him. It's not like we're hearing both sides of the story here. And a lot of people look at these sort of like Me Too situations like, it's not like they look at the women like they're completely innocent. So just because Jeremy has heard stories, that doesn't mean that we immediately side with them. So what, like, what a disservice that Jeremy did to the women that he knows. Like, I think that a lot of women are in very difficult positions. Women who don't have the sexual ethic that they um, only, they're only gonna have sex with people when they're married to them women who don't have that ethic and who don't adhere to that ethic, they're in a very difficult position because what ends up happening is that they, they end up finding themselves attracted to powerful men with a lot of influence. And I don't think it's necessarily always this sort of career exchange where they're like, where they compute, hey, I bet if I sleep with this person, then I'm going to 
get some sort of job. I don't think that they always run that calculation. Maybe that's one factor, but another factor is probably that they're probably genuinely attracted to these per these people, right? You know, like Trump saying, um, the thing when you're a super wealthy guy is that uh, women let you grab them by the pussy or whatever, right? It's like, women find themselves attracted to men in these positions. Maybe they sleep with them. Maybe one of the fallouts of that is that it actually does benefit their career. And, you know, you could say that they're naive and they tried to pretend that that wasn't at least a part of their motivation for it. You know, the rest of attraction was the rest of it too. And maybe it did benefit their careers. People basically like will slut shame the women. They'll be like, oh, well, it's just a loose woman. Well, just a loose woman, because in society, a lot of times we condemn whores, but we don't necessarily condemn the whore makers. There's asymmetrical ammunition against the women that isn't necessarily altogether fair. And uh, that's sort of just like the consequences of people having sex outside of marriage when they shouldn't. People in the comments a lot, in a lot of ways are saying that, see, the right wing is just a grift. They're not really moral people. They're all slime bags. And, and it's like, wait, so is this, is this the left making that argument? The, is the left now pissed off that people on the right are loose with their sexual ethics? Because that's kind of hilarious. Um, and it's like, wait, wait a second, is the left suddenly considered about people being hypocrites? Because that's a total joke. We are always saying that there's no adequate right-wing representation. We're saying that they're grifters, and that's why there is such a thing as the dissident right. Because we're so fed up and we're so pissed off. So we're just sort of like banished to these weird corners of the internet where we live stream out of our fortress. In Hollywood, you could say that there's like, oh, there's like the patriarchy, and Harvey Weinstein is this gatekeeper who keeps who gets to decide who gets to be famous and who doesn't or whatever, right? Well, that's not necessarily the case with like online politics. If you want to be some sort of online creator, there's just as many female gatekeepers as there are male. This isn't like traditional Hollywood. It suggests that the women who engaged in sexual relationships in order to have a prominent say in this sort of new media, that this wasn't just a situation of them purely being exploited. Here's where we get into it, to Laura and Southern about this, because again, I don't think that she possesses enough self-awareness. Because if Lauren Southern is going to say, hey, there's a right-wing casting couch and you need to sleep with whoever to get to the top, it's like, are you going to substantiate that? Or are you just going to basically levy accusations against all these, all these right-wing females that they slept their way to the top or right-wing males that they're gatekeeping, I guess. I say, like when she recently said she was going to explain how she got kicked out of the cult. She's, she described the dissident right as a cult uh, when feuding with Ralph instead of someone like Paul Joseph Watson. If she's gonna talk about how she was kicked out of the dissident right, I don't understand why she would be having that conversation when feuding with Ethan Ralph. That makes no sense to me. I don't understand, maybe I don't understand the lore enough there, but I did not know that she and him had any sort of beef. If we're going to talk about why it was that she got kicked out of the dissident right, that conversation needs to be had with Paul Joseph Watson because she was involved in those circles when that happened. There's all this, yeah, there's a lot of lore or whatever there, right? But if she's going to spill the tea and if she's going to dish, do it with the relevant people. Do it with the relevant people. Don't do it. With, like Ethan Ralph wasn't connected to that, or at least he was tangentially connected. If you want to, if you want to get into the dirt, Time to start talking about Paul Joseph Watson because that was the apex of the explosion. The whole right wing Anglo distant sphere, the hope not hate, all that stuff. But Lauren Southern wants to kind of just like lob shells. Anyway, that's that. That's that. Have a good rest of the day. Bonus content. This is a fun song.